let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to look at two familiar verses. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. The title of the message is Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of salvation for us to be here on earth. Thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us by going up to the cross at Calvary and shedding your precious blood to wash away all of our sins, past, present, and future. Lord God, I pray that you be with the congregation today and watch over us and comfort us and fill us with your spirit, Lord God, that we may be convicted of Pastor Jay's sermon. Amen. Please allow Pastor Jay's sermon, please allow Pastor Jay to preach a convicting sermon to, to take us away from our daily sins and that we may walk, walk away from our temptations knowing that we have Christ within us and that we can go another day uh, living here on earth, that we may be able to share the gospel to any lost souls out there that are willing to hear and listen. And Lord, we pray for all of them out there that they may receive you as their Lord and Savior for they don't know that they're on their way to hell. They're all lost, Lord God. They're, they're into the wrong doctrine, the false doctrine, uh, all these all these mega churches out there that's leading them astray and leading them into the wrong path. Lord God, I pray that you, you allow this sermon to convict them and pierce them so that they may come to know the truth, Lord God, of who you are, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind, that whoever so believeth on him shall have eternal everlasting life. Lord, I pray for anybody that's watching on the online ministry that if they're not saved, that you allow them to be saved, Lord God. Allow the message to prick them so that they may understand the true gospel only through the Lord Jesus Christ and not through any other false doctrines out there, Lord God. Please be with us today, Lord God. Please be with Pastor Kim and help heal him with his voice, Lord God. Please be with the Shrive's family and comfort them. For, for Mike Shrive has entered into heaven, Lord God. We thank you for that, and we pray of this in the almighty Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Bon voyage. As we know, this is where Apostle Paul is about to depart. And bon voyage essentially is goodbye and farewell. Or, you know, as Christians, we need to have good exit. Everyone says it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And it's very true. When you listen to many of you know, great Christians out there, it's not about how they start it. It's about how they finish. We have so many, so many Christians that were good and great serving the Lord in the ministry, being fired up for the Lord, but they're nowhere to be seen anymore. Why? Because they started hot. They started well. They were fired up for the Lord, but they fizzled. Their zeal disappeared, and they couldn't finish. The saddest thing you know, as a Christian to see is a man of God. A bunch of people who are fired up for the Lord suddenly just quit. They, for whatever reason it may be, it could be financial, it could be relationship, it could be whatever addiction that may be, or, you know, health reasons as well. They just quit. And... They're not able to say bon voyage, good exit. They're more like someone who's avoiding Christians now. They're someone who avoids the ministry. Deep inside, they know what is right thing to do, but they don't do it anymore because their pride has gotten in the way, their hurt feelings, and because of their bitterness towards God. In order for you to exclaim, Bon voyage. 
which is French, and say, good fight, just like Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. First thing is that in order to have a good departure from this life, it can only be made if you had a good fight. You have to continue to fight. Can you say, I have fought a good fight? I'm continuing to fight well. Because it is a fight. Whether you believe it or not, like it or not, it's a Christian warfare, spiritual warfare. And you're fighting constantly on a daily basis. When you're in a battle, unless you're alert, enemy is going to destroy you or kill you. You always have to be alert, be sober, be vigilant. Who's that adversary? Your adversary, the devil. He's looking around to see whom he may devour. Don't you think that devil did his best to destroy Apostle Paul? I mean, think about it. If he, he could knock him out, so many people won't get saved, right? I mean, scripture, Pauline epistles won't be there. But Apostle Paul knew that. So until Von Voyage, he fought and fought and fought. Where are you today? I mean, in your Christian walk, have you forgotten that you need to be a fighter? Have you forgotten that you need to constantly fight? Your flesh, the world, and the devil will never stop. They'll constantly attack you. Even right now, for some of you, your brain, right? Devil's attacking you, and you're letting him win. Yes. You're thinking about the TV shows, thinking about some other things other than focusing on this message and focusing on the Word of God. And whether you're listening as well, I mean, if you really want to listen and get right and, you know, be convicted and changed by the Word of God and preachings, you will not have three screens all at once listening to four different preachers. You know, muting one, again, muting one, muting one. When you don't want to listen to that preacher, you mute. You don't like that doctrine, you mute. No, if you want to be a true Bible believer, if you believe in the King James Bible, you will focus and you will make sure that, you know what, I'm in a fight right now. You know, I'm being tested every day because that's a Christian walk, right? I'm being tested. And today, there are going to be different distractions coming to me to make me stay away from the Word of God, having relationship, personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. And once you forget that you're in a good fight, once you forget that you're in a fight till death, as they say, you're going to lose. Because if a man does not train on a daily basis for the battle, think about Olympics. If you are a runner, track runner, if you don't run every single day, and if you're on train on a daily basis, what's going to happen? You gotta lose skills. You gotta become slower and slower and slower. So many Christians have become this slow poke, right? Yes. You, it, you used to be a jogger. You never ran because you were never sold out to the Lord. Oh, you're like that middle, you know, lukewarm Christian. But you were never that bad, right? Like, you, you were the one who always you know, pointing at other people on your mind or with your family or whoever you gossip with. And you're like, ah, oh, man, at least I come to church on Sunday. At least I come to church on Wednesdays, you know. I mean, I, you know, I give tithes. You know, I give my bare minimum, but I give tithes, right? And suddenly some hardship comes in your life. You're like, oh, man, you know, this is tough. This is tough. You know, Lord testing me, I know, but you know what? I can't go on. Lord knows me. I'm weak. I'm weak. You know, I'm very weak. And I don't have desire to go any longer, any further. And then you, you, you used to jog now. I mean, you're barely, barely crawling now in your Christian walk. There's no relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. There's no joy and happiness when you're reading the Word of God, if you do at all. You don't, I mean, whatever you're, when you hear things of God, it doesn't give you joy anymore. There's no happiness. Is that you today? 
Is that you where you're stuck there, you know, in a no man's land, as they say. And you know you're going to heaven, but there's no joy in your life. I mean, all the joy has been sucked out of your life, right? It's like, am I even, some people would say, you know, am I even saved? And then you start doubting your salvation as well. I mean, if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that once in your life, you're saved. No matter what happens to you, right? If you were repenting hard, you know, you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're saved. It doesn't matter what other, you know, this calls out there tell you, right? It's not salvation by works, by faith. Then you're a child of God. And as a Christian, can you honestly say, man, I'm fighting on a daily basis? Or do you forget on a daily basis that you're on a fight? You're, you're constantly fighting and fighting and fighting. And a lot of times, you forget. Why? Because you only look at the people around you. You never look at yourself. Yeah. I mean, in order for you to change, you can't look at me. You can't look at your wife. You can't look at your husband. You can't look at your children, your grandma, grandpa, your cousins, uncles, and aunts, and your coworkers. You have to look at yourself. You have to look at yourself and see, am I that Christian? Am I a Christian that's fighting a good fight today? Or am I that Christian who needs to get right with the Lord? Many of you need to get right with the Lord. I mean, we need to judge ourselves on a daily basis. I mean, if you really want to train well, and if you really want to finish well in a race, You will constantly examine your technique, your time, everything that will improve it. I mean, if you and I, our strive, we want to strive to meet, say we run 100 meter, and then we want to hit like 11 seconds, which is top notch, right? World record is like nine point something, even 12 seconds, pretty good. And say right now you're running 20 seconds. I mean, you might be laughing. I don't know. I mean, 20 seconds might be good, right? And you say, you know what? I have a goal. I want to reach 11 seconds. Okay. Are you going to be able to achieve that by sitting on your butt, you know, watching Olympics and they're like, okay, man, that, that's helping me right now. You know, it's motivating me. But you're doing that every single day. And you, you said, you know what? I'm going to do something and I'm going to achieve it. You said that six months ago, or maybe this is November, today is November 21st. So you said that January 1st of 2021. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for the Lord this year. Uh, this year is going to be different. I'm going to get closer to the Lord. I'm going to be a better testimony to my family and others. I want to lead more souls to the Lord. And I want to grow, study the word of God, Right? I don't want to stay as a little baby all this time. Okay, so this is, now we fast forward 11 months, November 21st. As you rewind and look back, have you fought a good fight? Did your time improve and increase? I mean, so if you're running 20 seconds, has that gone to at least 19 seconds, 18 seconds, 17 or it got worse, right? You know, your belly is becoming bigger, right? You've eaten more junk food than ever before. And you say, you know what, forget it, you know? After February, I gave up, right? Which everyone does, right? I'm like, okay, I have my New Year's resolution. I'm going to fight and fight and fight. And February comes around, man, I didn't do that well. So it's already over. I mean, that's the mindset of many, many people, mindset of many Christians. You look at yourself and you're like, man, I can't do this. I failed. I can't fight anymore. I'll leave that up to pastors over there, brothers over there, and sisters over there. I'm just going to just go on with my life. I'm not going to bother anybody. But in the sight of the Lord, man, you're not doing anything. 
you're actually being a bad testimony. Man, what's the last thing you want to do? Be a bad testimony for the Lord. And you don't think about it enough. Man, am I a good testimony for Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, look at those non-believing, you know, wrong doctrine, you know, cults out there. Unlike you, they think about it every single day. I mean, whether it's about works, right, you know, they want to meet that quota and whatnot. But they think about it all the time. I need to make that check mark. Man, I need to think about the Bible four hours today so that I could go to the paradise. I need to stand in the corner. You know, I need to give out the literature. I need to just talk about this scripture, even though I don't even know what it means. I'm just going to talk about it. You know, if they get into argument, it's good for me. It's going to continue and it's going to add to me. To them, and in my sight, They're fighting for the wrong cause, albeit, but sincerely and zealously every single day. But as Christians, you don't do anything. Literally, you wake up, you know, you brush your teeth, wash your face, eat your breakfast, go to work, come home, eat your dinner, watch your TV, play with your phone, go to sleep. And it rewinds every day. It's like Groundhog Day for you. There's no change. There's no fighting. I mean, you have to wake up. You got to fight. I mean, Christian walk, it's not easy peasy out there. No one's going to ever hand it to you, especially in Christian walk. You have to earn it. You have to earn every cent, as they say. You have to earn every step, as they say. You have to go forward every day. And in order for you to do that, you have to start realizing and wake up. Man, I'm in a battle right now, and I have to fight. And for whatever reason, if Lord calls you home today, do you think you could say, I have fought a good fight? I have finished my course. Which goes to my second point. Someone who could say bon voyage, a good exit, they can have good departure. Why? Because they have run to the end. They have finished the course. For many of you, you don't even know if you even started. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to finish the course that the Lord has set out for you. Unfortunately, for many, many Christians, they'll fall short because they don't think it's that important. I mean, is it important to you? I mean, we have, you know, Brother Stanman here, right? I mean, he goes to Philippines, you know, third world country out there. A lot, a lot of opposition out there. But why is he doing it? Because he wants to finish his course, right? course that Lord has set out for him. For each one of you, as he mentioned, you're a missionary in this greater Los Angeles area. I mean, most populous state in the United States. There are millions of souls out there. Yes. What are you doing? I mean, have you done anything lately? Because some of you will raise your hand. You know what? You know, two years ago, I passed a lot of tracks. I witnessed a lot of people. Or beyond that, you know, when I was in high school, I'm married and everything, you know, right now. I mean, that's like, say, 10 years ago. Man, when I was in high school and I was growing up, man, I done a lot. I went to every street preaching. You know, I witnessed to the lost souls out there. And I was reading the Bible. I was praying every day. So, so what? we got to go back to the beginning of the message. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. If your start is better than right now, then something's wrong with you. Right? You have lost the first love. You have lost the fire. And your priority is messed up. Number one thing is that you have forgotten that you're in a race. And you have forgotten that you have to finish the race. Think about it. 
I mean, I'm in a race right now. Say, marathon, LA marathon. I think they give, I don't know how long they give people to finish. 12 hours? I'm not sure. Eight hours? Some people will milk it, right? And then they will, or they need all that time to finish the race. But they finish it. But for some, they start and they never finish. They're somewhere in mile 10, somewhere in mile 5, somewhere in mile 15. You know, if, if the total, if the end line is, say, 24 miles or 25, 26, you know, they're not there. You and I, we're constantly running in this race, and we're fighting constantly. I mean, where are you right now? I mean, if your goal is to finish the race, and if you've been saved more than half of your life, then you should be more than half of the race on, right? right. You shouldn't be at mile number one if you've been saved for 10 years. Right? Why are you still stuck at mile number one when you should be at least at, you know, seven, eight, nine, or ten? There are a bunch of excuses you could tell me, you could tell all your families and friends. Everybody has a good excuse, as they say. Everyone says, you know what, because of this, because of that, you know. If you could just rely on your excuses to get out of it, then, I mean, why did the Lord die for you? Amen. I mean, the Lord had every excuse out there. But no. You know, he finished his course. I mean, what did the Lord say? It is finished. I mean, look at Apostle Paul. You know, I mean, he's finishing. And he said, I have finished my course. Do you know that you're in a race that needs to be finished? And in order for you to finish, it doesn't just happen. You know, some people think that, oh, you know what? It's going to happen. Okay. How is it going to happen? Have you ever asked that to yourself? How am I going to finish this? Or you just sit there, you know, twiddle your thumb, you know, lollygag, spend all your time and waste Lord's time on, you know, needless stuff, and you expect to finish. You won't. You'll never finish like you should when you don't recognize that you're in a battle, you're in a fight, you have to dedicate yourself. You know, for you to do that, a lot of, you know, runners, they have to be in tip-top shape, obviously. You know, if you're a swimmer, you know, team sport, you know, individual sport, in order to do well, you have to be in tip-top shape. Do you think that you're in a tip-top shape right now? Or are, do you think you're even in an okay shape in your spiritual battle? Even before that, right? Just a little bit, you know, I think as a Bible believer, we do need to talk about it. Physically, you know, are you doing your best, right? In order to serve the Lord, your body has to be in good, you know, shape. You can't let it go. You know, we can't be, we can't have that stereotype or, you know, notion of all these Bible-believing preachers, you know, with a belly hanging out, you know, you know, love the dinners and second dinners and third dinners, right? You have to keep your, you know, physical body in good shape. The Lord gave it to you. In order for to do work for the Lord, you have to move, right? And you have to go to places. You know, imagine if Brother Stedman, you know, Sister Stedman, you know, all their job and everything they do at the ministry, just, you know, sit at one place or lie down at one place and just talk. It's not going to work. They have to go to village, towns, everywhere, you know, ride the boat or, you know, ride the planes, and they have to go to places. They have to move. But after you take a step, and then you're just breathing heavy, or after two step, three step, you're breathing heavy, not because you, you, I mean, if you have inherent, you know, physical conditions, you know, you know, that's a different story. But 
you're just, uh, you know, used to be healthy or just healthy person, but you don't take care of your body, then you can't finish the race. You just can't. Then you have to see your diet. You have to see your exercise routine. I mean, think about Dr. Ruckman. I mean, he, the man was like in his 80s, I think even in his 90s, playing hockey. And when they play hockey, it's not, you know, just, you know, saying nice to each other. It's not about, you know, just, okay, you roller skate this way, I'll go the other way. No. Yeah. It's a battle, right? I mean, I heard some brethren, I mean, they're strong Bible believers who wants to really kill the other guy during the game because they get so into it. You know, outside the thing, you know, they're hugging, you know, I love you, brother, you know, they love each other, but during the game, you know, it's a battle. I mean, at that age, you know, I mean, you'd be like, oh, you know, if you could just walk to church, if you could, you know, drive to church, you're good enough. No. You have to put a little more work in it, but you have to do it. I mean, people, honestly, when you see, especially this day and age, right, if you really want to do something for the Lord, you have to keep your body well as well. You can't be eating, I mean, this junk food every single day and pray to God, God, give me a healthy body. You can't. You can't be, you know, eating all these bad carbs and fat all the time and you're saying, Lord, I don't want to get sick. Please help me not to get sick as I put in all this junk into my body. It's almost like someone who's smoking all the time and telling God, God, do not give me any cancer. You know? It's like someone who's doing all this, you know, bad thing. You know, Bible says your body is, what? Holy temple. I mean, it is. If, do you treat your body like holy temple of God? I mean, that's, that's part of the race. That's part of the fight. Then, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stay there any longer, but, you know, make sure that you take care of your physical body in this race. You know, if you want to do something for the Lord, but you can't move, what good is it then? I mean, you could pray, but wouldn't it have been better if you could have actually gone to people, gone to places, and actually make, made a difference in that way, right? What if someone calls you? Hey, sister, hey, brother. You know, I've been going through a hard time, and I, I do want to talk about, you know, my life after death. I know you're a Christian, and tell me something about Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're not able to move, if you're not well, what are you going to do? Then you're going to miss out on the blessings and, you know, ministry. Then you have to make sure that you take care of your physical body. And in order for you to really, really finish the race now, you know, spiritually speaking, you have to be on guard and you have to be alert and you have to check on a daily basis. That's what many Christians forget to do. They don't do it on a daily basis. They come Sunday and they think they're okay. They do it. Monday through Saturday, or maybe minus the Wednesday if you do come, you know, Wednesday, you know, prayer meeting, Bible service. You're like, you're okay. And it's a very, very old illustration, but something that you and I need to hear all the time. And can you live just by eating one day per week? You're like, okay, I'm only going to eat on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday, I'm not going to eat anything. Right? What's going to happen to you? You got to be a very, 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 very weak person. Your mind will flutter and stutter. Your mind will be everywhere. You won't, you won't have a sound mind because you're malnutrition. But spiritually speaking, are you malnutrition right now? I mean, do you eat enough Word of God? Do you pray enough, right? I mean, do you go out there and witness enough? Are you a good testimony for the Lord? 
And so it seems like, based on your facial expressions, I guess you're in malnutrition. Then you have to start eating and get trained. You know? And you got to start exercise, not only physical side, but especially your spiritual side. Because you want to finish the race. You don't want to be that person who just gradually, you know, decline over the years and literally just drops dead. And finish lines all the way over there. And you also don't want to be that person. You're so close to the finish line. But you drop dead right before it because you gave yourself to sin, right? Because you let the world, the devil, and the flesh win, have victory over you. I mean, Bible clearly says, well, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Then Lord will give you victory if you are willing to do it. No one will ever force you to do it in your Christian walk. I'm not going to force you to do it. It's up to you. You have free will. You and I have free will to either do it or don't do it. But just remember, when you don't do it, you will live a miserable Christian life. Bitter Christian, shameful Christian, someone that who does want to think about judgments of Christ ever, who does not think about bomb voyage, who never thinks about good exit. However, if you are one of those few Christians out there, you know, Bible-believing Christians who's grounded in sound doctrine, who wants to finish the race, who wants to have a good fight every single day, then you could be that person. I mean, why not, right? Your testimony and your legacy, if Lord Terry should be, verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Who would you rather be? Someone who finished the course, kept the faith, fought a good fight, or someone who quits in the middle? You don't want to be that quitter, right? And no matter who you are, you don't want to be that quitter. You can finish, be victorious, and say your bond voyage when you finish your course. Let's pray.